There's three of them. <laughs> oh my gosh, catch that one. <laughs> I'm trying to multitask. We'll just let him go back down. Dude, there's like three of them down there. I have no bait, but got a little feather treble. So I hooked up. I might need you to grab this camera. Oh, that one's coming in hot to you. Oh! He whacked it. He's coming to you. Oh my gosh. He's gonna eat. Circle back, circle back. No way! Well, the ice may have took a crap around home, but we found some fishable stuff that could even support all of this weight. <laughs> we did a little road trip actually over to Devil's Lake, North Dakota, and uh, we're chasing some walleyes this evening, some super shallow, skinny water walleyes, set up in about six feet. I think Nick's in like four to five, out to seven. And uh, we got here a little earlier, went on a little spear journey looking for some perch. Got a few little ones, couple bonus walleyes, and uh, one of those big fat devil's lake jumbos that you look for. Perchy? Whoa! There we go. <laughs> just came in solo. I was graphing fish and not getting bit, and I finally just put on a little rocker spoon with a dropper chain and some euros, and finally getting whacked a little bit. But that belly, we don't get these around home. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh my gosh. Now the sun is kind of getting to the horizon. We're set up. Holes all drilled to be quiet. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, TJ. And we're gonna see if we can catch a few shallow water aggressive walleyes as the sun dips down. It feels so good to be back on the ice. The last time I went ice fishing, that ice literally all went out and it's open water and they're sneaking boats in there now. Catching some fish, we'll see what the evening brings up in skinny water. Fish. Perfect. Thank you. Run over that camera quick. <laughs> How does that thing not drop it when we're crunching around? Right? I know, I was like trying to walk right. I was like, oh. A little double trouble? Yeah, I was right in the middle and I didn't know if I should go left or right because Half just hooked up with one. TJ just hooked up with one over there. Instead of going left or right, you know what I should have done? Stayed and fished. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, man. Line went out in that direction a little bit. There we go. Just like that, shallow water. It's right there. This is just a perfect little eater sized guy. Got uh, that guy went on the drop shot, just barely skin hooked on the edge there. It's getting dark, so I don't know how good you guys can see it, but barely skin hooked on the edge. And that's a good eater sized fish, and that's just the combination that I've kind of really been liking, and that is the drop shot paired with actually the finicky fooler has been kind of good. I've been playing it just like a normal dead stick uh, with the drop shot rig, but also on that finicky fooler, I really like it as well. I wonder if we're kind of like we're gonna eat it or something. <laughs> it's an eater. I'm like, oh, it's an eater, you know? <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> Not a 27, <laughs> but it's a walleye. I'm just gonna go whoop. into the darkness. Yeah. He's 
like, you just stuck me in the nose. <laughs> Why would I do that again? Oh, here he comes. There we go. Nice. Yeah, baby. They're fired up this morning. We're literally just trying to get the house set up still. <laughs> that's like the third or fourth one that's came flying in. Holy smokes, you think you wanted that? How far down is that? Open your chompers. Jeez. Alright, just a little bugger. But he's got a bunch of friends. And they get bigger. And we're back. Obviously, uh, it's light out now. It's a new day. We didn't do a whole lot of talking on the camera last night. But we caught a bunch of shallow water fish, sort of dialed in where they're at. And we knew right where we were coming back to this morning to set up shop and capitalize on some more of these shallow water, aggressive walleyes. And now this morning we'll actually talk you through what we're doing, what we're seeing, how much ice there is, a little bit of everything, and uh, see if we can get a few of these things topside. We will. <laughs> if last night was any indicator, that was fun, man. And we were... Uh, just hopping around, bopping around, figuring out kind of the best areas and stuff, and uh, it was a no-brainer just to come straight back here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. That thing was so high up in the water column a nicer fish. There's another big one on bottom. Turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up. Dude, the sketchy thing about the shallow water is they still got a lot of fight in them when they get to the hole. <laughs> Whoa, it's a unicorn. <laughs> Look at the torsal fin on that thing. See if it'll poke it up. I got a unicorn. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you can't even make that up. Dude, I was only like three feet under the ice jigging and that thing, I think it was maybe, I'll have to look at the footage, maybe three feet under the ice when I set the hook. And I had him in the hole right away and then it started fighting. <laughs> That's the fun thing about these shallow walleyes. Some of these holes that we've been fishing in, you set the hook and you don't even have to reel and they're there. But if you don't get them straight in the hole right away, then you're kind of screwed because they're on the on right underneath the ice thrashing and to get them turned up is wild. Look at that thing. All right, let's put it back. <laughs> that was so cool, dude. So this is one of the reasons that unicorn, that was, a, that was an above average fish. I don't know how long it was, but quality bite. And I'm using an overkill rod for these shallow walleyes. A 38 inch tune-up custom rods commander. I am just a sucker for beefy, powerful, extra fast rods. This is one of my favorite walleye rods ever because of that power. And when you're catching like a 12 inch walleye in six feet to eight feet of water, absolutely overkill. I don't know, we should follow police. Right? A power precision would be a better all around rod. Even a precision, but that fish right there is why I usually err on the side of boom because I want to be able to get that thing's head turned up that hole. Oh, dude, I'm like, I'm jacked up from that fish right now. So I already owned a commander, but I was at the St. Paul show and I saw this sexy murdered out commander that's all black, carbon fiber handle, super light, gold recoil guides little sexy gold threads there <laughs> and I'm like this thing you're coming home with me there's no way I was leaving without it and I walked around there with two hands on it to make sure nobody took it from me when I was down there but so now I own two commanders and murdered out gold guides what dude it's so sexy I'm just in love oh <laughs> I love this thing I'm just running uh this one is eight pound Suffolk's Advanced Mono. 
And sort of like I talk about in the summertime when I'm using jigging wraps and stuff, I like running mono for that stretch, that little extra give, because I like running more powerful rods. You know, you could get away with braid, but if you had braid on an extra fast, medium heavy rod, there's not a whole lot that can give in that situation. And usually what happens for me anyway, is then those hooks tear out when they're at the bottom of the hole, you're trying to get them turned up. So eight pound suffix advance ice mono, a little number 12 rolling swivel, and then some eight pound or 10 pound uh, suffix advance fluorocarbon leader. It's just super abrasion resistant, resistant. And as you can see, that fish is at a, that line is at a 90 degree angle underneath the ice when a fish is thrashing. So I like having that fluorocarbon because it's literally rubbing back and forth on the edge of that ice and it's not nicked up or dinged up and we back to fishing. Oh, oh we got a two pack down here. There's it. Oh, 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 there's three of them. <laughs> oh my gosh, catch that one. <laughs> I found a multi tail. Just let him go back down. See if we, dude, there's like three of them down there. I have no bait, but got a little feathered treble. If I hook up, <laughs> I might need you to grab this camera. Oh, that one's coming in hot to you. Oh! <laughs> He whacked it. He's coming to you. Oh my gosh. He's gonna eat. Circle back, circle back. <laughs> no way! Thanks for missing that bitch. Oh, that was a good one. It looked like a better one. It was mark. a good one. That one was probably like low 20s. I, sh I almost, almost went in arm for it. It was like at the bottom of the hole. Well, that was hectic, <laughs> oh my word. All of a sudden there was four fish on the graph. And you saw one went down. I, oh, look at that, look at him. That's him coming out of the hole. No way. Oh, I just lost him. <laughs> oh my gosh. That what is happening? He was still like down at the bottom of the ice. I watched him on live scope come back down and then eat your bait again. It's so this shallow, is why I almost didn't even need to reel, I almost flipped him in. You North Dakota folks are so spoiled. Can you imagine having three shots at a fish around Brainerd? Actually get it into the hole and it swims down and bites again. Oh, here comes another one. Dude, this is a crazy bite window. I don't even have bait on and that thing smoked that. Come on, baby, come on, baby. Oh, I missed him. He's coming to no, me. No, he's going to bite yours. Get ready to take this. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, this is so hectic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so zoomed in. I'm like holding this above my head. <laughs> oh, that was funny. This is one of the most hectic 90 seconds I have ever experienced. That was quick. I don't even know if you're <laughs> in the frame. <laughs> I'll show this guy too. <laughs> that was wild. Wow. <laughs> Dude. What just happened? I can't, I gotta, I gotta process this for just a second. Can you imagine if we were running two lines? Like if I thought about putting a dead stick down here too. Wait a minute. That would have been an absolute nightmare. Dude, these shallow fish are so hot to trot. I had mentioned that we were fishing for some uh, out deeper in some flooded trees yesterday. And those fish just kind of come moseying in and like you got to work them, finesse them, whatever. These fish that are in eight feet, five feet, you know, a shallow rock to sand transition. Oh my word, are they feisty. <laughs> He's using a, a VMC rattle spoon and like a silvery metallic -y. I'm using a rattling roach spoon, uh, kind of a orangish color, glow UV. Oh, I did have, did have a minnow head back on there. But we originally started with, you use something more natural, you use something more like glow, you know. Right now, it does not matter. <laughs> it does not matter what you use, and I'm sure it's because it's still kind of that early morning low light window. And as the day progresses, 
we'll probably have to actually work these fish into biting, but that bite window was, dude, that was just, we were, we were a hot mess. <laughs> Not just me this time. In a really good way, though. This is, uh, Devil's Lake is just magical, man. I don't know why I'd hardly come over here. It's only five hours away. And it never crosses my mind to drive like westish, and uh, the ice is actually really good. I could not believe it that, uh, you know, we were in like that DL area and it was sketchy, and it's like you go three hours farther northwest, and we've got 11 inches of ice here. Um, the least we've measured is 10. We found areas with over 12. Obviously, there's still some sketchy areas on the lake, narrows, moving water, stuff that froze over a little later, but. It is, uh, we even saw a truck on the ice. <laughs> it's so crazy. And back home, they literally are putting boats in on Gull Lake as of yesterday. And uh, Mille Lacs as well. So if you're looking for a little road trip, Devil's Lake has good ice and gooder fishing. Gooder, dude, that was insane. How many, how many fish do you think were within like a 50 foot radius of us for that like couple minutes? It was a pack. At one point, there was four on the ground. We had four on the line. You can only see a down. ten foot by like six foot section right now. Yeah. Unreal. And now nothing. <laughs> but these little pods are just moving in, feeding frenzy. And uh, I gotta give props to T.J. Erickson and Nick Linder. They did a bunch of camera work along here literally using Aquaviews and the Markham to find the transition. You can see it on live where you'll see big boulders and rocks and then they stop. But when they put the camera down, they literally found where it goes from gravel to right over our shoulders, all sand. And uh, we are set up right on that transition and they're using it like a highway, just like open water fishing. When you use side imaging to drop waypoints and mark those transitions. I mean, I would love to come out here and map this and drop waypoints in a boat but uh to do it on the ice you just need a handful of dudes with underwater cameras and popping holes and it takes a lot longer but it's worth finding that line literally bringing fish to you and obviously we decided to pop up the x200 today and get out of the wind and but being on that that highway and having fish come in and cycle through to us sure beats hole hopping in 30 mile per hour winds Oh, there's crawling up, coming in. Nice, dude. Smack that it. That was a sexy little look. Smack it. I was waiting to see if a friend was following him in. Look at that. Barely hooked. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> so I mentioned I was using the new VMC Rattlin Roach Spoon. It didn't make a big difference what you had down there this morning when it was hot and heavy in that 30, 45 minutes of the best fight of the day. But as the day goes on and we start seeing less fish and they're moving in slower and you have to finesse them, then you definitely get more bites. But I'm most excited to be using this thing around home on my clear zebra mussel infested lakes. Then I'll be using a lot more of the metallic-y colors and stuff. But what I like about this spoon You'll notice the first thing you'll probably notice, that little dangler there, right? It's got a feathered treble, something I've been adding to my jigging spoons for like eight, ten years. I used to take them off of my X-Wraps and any other crankbaits I could find. Now it comes with one. What's different about this one, it's actually like a marabou, a super light, fluffy, poofy marabou that breathes in the water. I don't think it's going to be as durable as those like tinsel, uh, thicker, you know, I think it's called tinsel, um, feathered trebles, but it's a lot more supple, soft, floaty, drifty. You don't need to put a minnow head on it a lot of the times. You can, I did a couple times today, and then eventually we just let this thing rock itself. And the cool thing about this spoon, in my opinion, is it's kind of the best of both worlds. It does have a rattle, but it's not a super loud, obnoxious rattle. It's a subtle little lighter click but it's also a really fluttery buttery spoon you can see that profile and that's what gives it that flutter that kind of uh, unique dart changes directions but soft and what's what's awesome with that is you can fish this both ways reading the mood of the fish on the graph 
if you really want to like kind of pop it like you do a rattle spoon you can get that thing moving fast a little bit of noise get the tail kicking but if you want you can also fish it like those flutter spoons traditionally those really thin stamped metal profile ones where you get it like just on slack line fluttering past their face slow it down so you can do best of both worlds one spoon like i said i fished with it a little bit early ice around the brainerd area and caught some walleyes on it this is my first experience spending a whole uh, outing using it and i just can't wait to try it around home more in zebra mussel infested fussy walleye waters. That's a big fish. Or bigger. Oh no, it is a pike. Look at the fins on that thing. Yeah, it's a big pike. One, two, three, maybe like a 30 inch or better. Oh, it's only two two blocks. Is it two or three blocks? Two. Seeing those fins was really cool though. Mm-hmm. You got a minnow on there? I must. You got a chance to get it. I'm gonna step heavy right into your face as you're leaning into that minnow bucket. <laughs> I'm keeping, around, keeping them around long enough for you to seal the deal. <laughs> Oh, there's another one. Oh yeah, that might even be a walleye. That one, that one looks a little blobby there. Yeah. Just come crashing down. These are the first fish that have moved slow. Look at the bubbles pop up when I pound bottom. That's weird, and I like it. Is there a fish under you there, Nick? Yes, that's a pike. And it's just sitting. Yeah. Should I scare him? No. Well, maybe if we want more 12 inch walleyes to come in. <laughs> I think we all want that. It. Oh, I popped too hard at that one. <laughs> that one's still sitting there. Hello. In the other hole. That pike is still sitting down there, if it's a pike. I don't know what that thing is doing. You saw that big old, we think it's a pike come in. You can see the, look like big peck fins and stuff on it, but this guy wasn't scared of him, I suppose. Should we let him down the pike hole and see what that thing does? <laughs> Let's see. Go get that pike out of here for us. Didn't even move. No. He ain't scared. That was fun though. That thing didn't even move. It sounds like you guys have been killing it over here. Our neighbors are coming over for a little visit. What is up? Like I said, we're fishing what with TJ Erickson, Nick Linder. It's actually Nick's birthday today. Mm. Happy birthday, Nick. And when this is posted a month from now, it'll be your <laughs> You are quick on the edit. <laughs> we'll see, but... Yeah, we, uh, I feel kind of bad because we're maybe 50 feet away from them and the fish are going nuts here and they've seen a couple over Boy, there. Yeah. And that's, like I said before, that's because these guys did the legwork. I can't take any of the credit. I wouldn't like, say these guys. TJ was the one running around. <laughs> Nick was just sitting there just popping fish. <laughs> yeah. And I'm out here. So yeah, yesterday we were out. Nick, literally, I think you fished the same holes the whole day right yeah and I you were catching fish sat down in a spot and like fish just were rolling through kind of all day yeah and, and I everybody was running around like trying to find <laughs> fish and they, <laughs> yeah. it's just like one of those sweet little spots but then you did some scouting around well i went to probably five different spots and honestly every spot looked good you know we started out here and we kind of pieced together we put the camera down and saw some rocks so we're like okay now we're seeing what these are around so, you know a lot of times on devil's lake you're hearing a lot about the timber and so I went out and tried to find some of that timber and I found some really good stuff, some old tree lines and it just looked juicy and I did not see anything. Then I popped over down this shoreline a little bit, found some weeds, found some rocks and it just looked awesome. <laughs> Again, didn't see a fish. So I came back over, it's like they've got to be moving around these rocks and they were shallow. So I went over by Nick here and I kind of bounced around and I drilled out a bunch of holes, even just on this little like flat. It's almost like a little bit of a point. Mm -hmm. And finally I was out here just on the other side of us is just sand not even a rock mixed in 
And so I was fishing out on that, so I knew there was going to be a transition line somewhere. And between the live scope and the aqua view, I was able to just eventually find kind of this right on this edge, this transition. And as I noticed last night when we kind of sat here, through the night those fish were just kind of cruising right along this edge on that sand to rock transition. There's some boulders up there, a little bit more rubbly in between. And it is just so evident how clearly they are running this kind of that spot on the spot. Because we are, like you said, yeah. 50 feet away. And yeah, even those I, I dead sticks. Yeah. I think are, it's like a testament to being in an area where there's fish and then finding like the best lane in that area where the fish are moving through. Yep. Yeah, and sure. I, at one point I was fishing in the middle of Hoffman. Actually, well, in the middle of all three of you. Yep. And I had a, like a boulder kind of behind me. Not one fish would come in there because I was on... I was in like the ditch, you know, and they're using that highway and I couldn't yeah. do anything. I tried every trick in the book, rattle baits, fishing high so they could see me come to me. Finally, I just moved 20 feet over and boom, got bit. And yeah, dial, you guys dialing in that, uh, that transition, that line is, uh, it's, it's amazing. And yeah, everybody talks about the Devil's Lake perch, which are incredible, but this has been an absolute blast. Yeah, well, it's a better walleye fishery than any of the <laughs> yeah, walleye anything. fisheries we have around, right? Like Times a million. <laughs> well, getting on a shallow bite like this, yeah. and I'm sure you've talked about that, but these yeah. fish are so aggressive, and it is so fun Dude, getting just, on these fish like this. They are hot to trot, other than, I think this is that same, same pike. Same pike, Chris Roman. <laughs> Ooh, he's moving, but probably, yeah. maybe we should just make him mad and get him out of here. But if he bit right now, I'd probably squeal like a little kid. <laughs> And then it'd be a 26 inch bite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah, and then like the numbers obviously isn't incredible, but no. you get some quality fish yeah. too. Mm -hmm. I, that is the one nice thing too. Like if you can choose between fishing shallow and fishing deep, I just love to pick shallow every chance I can because it just seems like those fish are more aggressive. It seems like they're meaner and madder and you might mark, you might mark less fish, but like you'll probably catch more because you'll get more bites, you know? And you don't have to worry about barotrauma? <laughs> yeah, no barotrauma <laughs> issues. <laughs> so you're safe there, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> I love this. This is what happens when you get a bunch of fishing bums together. We make barotrauma jokes. I thought you were going straight for the barotrauma when you started talking about fishing shallow. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were too. <laughs> I thought you were just I diving. Have. I thought you were diving head in. I should have. Pump the brakes, Linder. <laughs> easy, easy, easy. I don't know if you guys saw, but Aaron posted this video. <laughs> the goat. Not a lot of people have watched it yet, but I feel like it's going to get some traction eventually. <laughs> It's one of, it'll get views over time. Yeah. Just tell him, Brett, by... this is MGK versus Eminem all over again. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dang. It's fun to watch. <laughs> Love to see it. <laughs> nice to be on the sidelines. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> you notice we didn't allow him in the house. <laughs> That's not my way in. What do you think, man? Should make a little move ski. Perch time. A little, I think we should do a little jumbo trotting. So these shallow water fish, it's getting to be about 10-ish o'clock. They're still moseying around, but they're slower and they're fewer and farther between. So we're gonna make a little move now. I know we could sit here all day and get one or two coming through and pick them off, especially with dead sticks, even in this shallow deal, but Devil's Lake has jumbos and that bite. Usually by like 11 o'clock, it's gangbusters for a couple hours. That midday bite is just the deal. So I think we're gonna pack up, hit the road, bounce around to some flooded timber, some some basin stuff, and uh, see if we can catch a few jumbos. Maybe there'll be a jumbo video. Maybe there won't be. But either way, thank you for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, make sure to check out Nick Linder's YouTube channel and TJ Erickson's channel. I know that they were filming. TJ's gonna have a lot of underwater footage. I think even showing these bottom transitions, but I think he got some of these fish to eat on underwater camera, which is like impossible. So props yeah. to him, <laughs> but thanks so much for watching. Till next time. All right, so Brett let me borrow a VMC rattle spoon yesterday. It looked really good. I wanna try it and he tells me today I'm gonna need that back. Dude's got 12 of them. Check this out. I do not. I only have like 
five of that color. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need that back. But yeah, that was one. Come on. That's the go-to Clearwater color. I had already put a little feathered treble on it. Like, I suppose you could have that. I suppose. It's the least he could do. Yeah, I, I do feel kind of bad now for asking for I actually did ask for it back. <laughs> Take a little look-sees. How I organize these bad boys. Obviously, this is my favorite color. And then the one with the gold back, but clear water perch. Some glows, some fire tigers. Lots of feathered trebles added in here. Next size down. I keep some of them rocker spoons with for when it's really going down. Bull spoons when I want the silent but deadly option. This is just how I order organize my deal so bull spoons on that side rattle spoons flip it over and we get into the fluttery stuff the tinglers the tumblers with the little kicker blades and the new ones this year rattle and roach spoons so this box weighs like 10 pounds <laughs> but it has every color size profile whether it's flutter rattle and the thing's bulletproof so it goes everywhere with me not goes with you give me that spoon back <laughs> <laughs>